This is our Indy 23 system. And as you can see, it comprises a raft bed, um, wicking bed, and two media beds. And we also have two fish tanks left and right. We've got a mineralization tank, and we've got two swirl filters, one for each fish tank. Now, why have we done this? We, we regard this as probably one of our flagship designs, in actual fact, because this system fits right in between a commercial system and a home system. This is what we would call a large home system or a small pilot plant for a commercial system. Now, how do we come about with this, with this plan set? We've produced a set of plans of the Indy 23, and the reason we call it an Indy 23, we'll go back to that one first. Now, the reason we call it an Indy 23 system is because several years ago, we were asked to go to India to do a project in India. And the whole idea seeded from that, we started talking about our India project, and of course, it eventually got shortened to Indy, and the 23 actually designates that it's 23 square metres, or 250 square feet of growing area. So that's why it's called Indy 23. But we were always being asked by people all the time. They'd ring up to talk to us about uh, aquaponics at home, you know, how much space do I need to grow for my family? And a typical family, mum, dad and two kids, that we might say is a typical family, we tried to figure out exactly how much growing area a family needed to produce enough food, um, that is leafy greens and tomatoes and the like, for their family needs. After a lot of research, and I mean, we spent a lot of time working on this, um, we found that there was a planting guide actually provided by a company called Diggers in Australia in Victoria, which is a really highly respected company. And they put out a planting guide for a family of four. I thought, wow, this is just, just right for us. And their planting guide actually dictates every day of the year. You know, January the 1st, you put in two bean seeds. January the 2nd, you do something else and so on. So that over a year of time, if you followed their planting guide, you would have sufficient vegetables uh, and leafy greens, etc., to feed a family of four. So we took that and we studied it very carefully, and they recommend that you have 30 square metres of growing area in order to do that, and that's about 300 square feet, give or take a few feet. And we figured with aquaponics, the efficiency of it, the fact that we can plant things a bit closer and our yields are a bit better than a standard garden, we figured we could do the same thing in a 23 square metre area. And I've got to tell you, we built, this is our pilot plant, and we built this now, it's now in its fourth year of operation. So it's well and truly proven that it really does produce and can produce really, really well. So first of all, as I pointed out earlier, we've got the fish tanks and the swirl filter and the mineralization tank for each one. And on each side, we have beds. Now this side, I'm running up this side along here, we have media beds. And they are 16 foot long each one, or 4.8 meters long. We divided them half, so we wind up with four media beds, which we can plant different, all kinds of different things in it. You can see now we've got, because winter's coming on here, we've got cabbages and all sorts of leafy greens. We've got cauliflower coming up. We've got red cabbage, red cauliflower. We've got a, a crop of standard old garden beans here that's just about finished. And we've got some new ones starting there. On this side is our raft bed, which once again, it's 16 foot long or 4.8 meters long. And in here we've got an absolute pile of beautiful cost lettuce that you can see. Have a look at them, aren't they beautiful? Just growing, just going gangbusters. So you can see for a family of four, in actual fact, I haven't got this planted very well because I shouldn't have this many lettuce growing all at the same time. I should be staggering it, shouldn't I? But that's another discussion altogether. And in this end of this bed, we've got some wonderful winter uh, greens coming on, you know, spinaches of all different kinds and bok choys and all sorts of things. And when we get up here, we, we have a look at our wicking bed. Now the wicking bed, this is a marvelous thing. We've got a section in the course on wicking beds, but this is the brainchild of an Australian guy named Colin Austin. And he figured this out many years ago. I won't go into the details about it, but many people have copied this all around the world now. You see people growing stuff in wicking beds. Now, why would we bother with a wicking bed in an aquaponic system? Simple. In our, you know, our, our design idea or our design parameters was that we wanted to provide everything we could for a family of four. So there are some things that don't grow quite so well in an aquaponic system. For example, root crops, carrots, potatoes, all those kind of things where the crop is below the ground. And that's where a wicking bed comes into its own. And you can see we've got some lovely carrots coming on here. Aren't they just beautiful? They're coming on. Probably another month or six weeks, we'll be able to start pulling carrots for our winter soups and that sort of thing. 
really good stuff. Here we've got some cauliflowers growing. Now we could grow these in the gravel beds over here if we wanted to, but we've decided to put just some in here, mix it up a little bit. We've got some radishes coming up in here in the middle. It's just no end to the variety. And let's look what we've got here in this beautiful soil um, and compost in the wicking bed. Look at that, isn't that beautiful stuff? And I can see a worm down there looking at me, yes. Now the wicking bed is part of the system, but it's not running on the pump from the aquaponic system. We're pumping water from the fish tanks to the media beds or the gravel grow beds, and we're pumping water to the raft beds, but we're not pumping water through the wicking bed. And that's a tragic mistake some people make. As soon as they think about wicking beds, they start thinking of a way to automate them. You know, can I run my fish water through them? Get questions all the time. Don't do it, it spoils them.